Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I tell you all about edible things. And today we're going to look at one of the most interesting and wonderful things in my backyard, I think, which is the chocolate pudding tree fruit. Now, if you don't know about the chocolate pudding fruit, it's quite the thing. And I happen to have one I ripened for this video. We're going to chop that open. We're also going to take a look at some of the features of the tree itself. And I'll tell you what I do to make it look so darn beautiful. Now, the chocolate pudding tree is novel to say the least. And many have asked, does it actually taste like chocolate? So I'm going to cut right to that. You need to know. It tastes a little bit like chocolate. Like there's like a chocolatey kind of in the neighborhood of chocolate, but you're not, it's not Willy Wonka. So, you know, I don't want to mislead you into thinking that you will actually be picking Cadbury milk chocolate bars from the trees. You know, I, I had thought that and had my heart broken and I want to uh, just avoid that for you. Okay, so the chocolate pudding tree fruit is actually a relative of the persimmon. It's a type of persimmon, I believe. And uh, that means that the fruit looks like a big old tomato. So let's just start right off with the fruit. Let's go over, I've got one. We'll go inside the chicken currently chicken and bunny zen bunny run and we're going to cut one open and even try it you know because this is eat your backyard by the way if you're not subscribed to eat your backyard i understand if you already are thanks it's a lot of fun but i would encourage you to subscribe why not give it a try i'll show you some things i know how to do and maybe we can learn together all right, so let's get right into the video. We're gonna go ahead and chop that dirty chocolate pudding fruit open. Pudding fruit, you say? Why, yes. A ripe chocolate pudding fruit. Hello, chickies. No, no, no chicken escape. No, 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 no. You pay. Okay, let's get right to it. Now I brought a little paper towel just to put it on top of it, probably help you to see it even more. Now you know it's starting to get ripe when the actual skin starts to turn a darker color. And also by the, the feel. And when it's ripe when you can you see I want to press that in, it leaves a dent. It's pudding like in there. Uh, one thing I've noticed about having this fruit for years is that it can it tends to harbor little insects around this cap. I and mean, again, I said it looks kind of tomato-like. If you rip that cap off, you get a good look at the love. That's why they call it chocolate pudding. Man, is that amazing or what? Probably bring it out in the sunlight to... Oh, by the way, to take a look at it. This knife is my favorite knife I've ever gotten. It's a floral knife it's like swiss army style all right so soft this is perfectly ripened and we're going to keep the seeds off of this too because they will grow quite nicely from seeds which is another nice benefit of this look at that it looks like i'm wiping chocolate pudding on the you can see the seeds I don't want to cut them, but they're in this, like, you know, center material. I'll probably just remove those. I really don't want to shop through a seed mistakenly. All right, so I think I'll just cut some of this out. Oh, you chicken, hey, chicken, chicken, chicken. We got a chicken attack. Hold on. Okay, I had to move that chicken down. We're going to feed the chicken some chocolate pudding fruit, see how they like it. All right, let's cut this piece. Now look at that. That is chocolate pudding fruit. And you see, you could, almost, you could take a spoon to it, is my point. All right, let's give it a try. All right, so there it is. Let's give it a go. It really is good. And it does have a slight chocolate flavor to it. Yep. 
you ever eat a chocolate pudding tree fruit on the internet? Man, it's it's good. Kind of tastes like like avocado, very avocado-ish. Mm. You know these chickens are gonna love it. Let's go see. chopped a few. We love to feed the hens. Here you go. You don't like it? Hmm. That's funny. They don't seem particularly interested. Interesting. Well, I mean, look, they've got scratch grains right next to it. I think they're just full. They'll eat it later in the day. Certainly you can see the beautiful ovate leaves and they're very shiny in the sun. That's something I, I love about them. They're kind of a heavier duty leaf. You can see on these leaves, they've been chewed up a bit by beetles, but they still sally forth and look okay. The, the leaf itself is really a little tougher than, you hear a little, than most leaves. So. That's kind of nice because especially in a place like Central Florida, Eastern Central Florida, where we have a lot of salt spray, these leaves can resist it rather well. And they also break down very easily even though they are more rigid leaf. Now you can probably see there is a decent amount of fruit in this tree. As I explore around, just keep finding more and more. And they're not up too high so that I can't get to them, which is nice. See one way, way up in there. Yeah, a good, good harvest. Now, this has never produced so many and so big, and the reason it's producing so much fruit is simply because I'm providing it with adequate fertilization, and that comes to it through largely bunny manure. There's another one. Oh, there's another one back up in there. Yeah, there are a lot of them. Oh, I, now that I'm looking, I see them tucked in everywhere. Bunny manure, little worm vermiculture, and this thing is rocking. Now you can see there are a lot more fruit on this tree set and ready to go. The key, I think, to harvesting these is to let, her, let them counter ripen. If you let them fall on the ground, that's one way to go when they're ripe, but a little bit easier to let them get to the point where you think they're the maximum size they can be, but still hard and, and unripened, and then bring them in and counter ripen them slowly or ripen them outside. I can see three giant, well, make that six giant chocolate pudding tree fruit just in this one tree. So that's a really decent harvest in my opinion. Now you can see on my tree, it has this, this one root that runs along the ground here. So that's not necessarily desirable, but this is an anchoring root, certainly, that I need to have on this tree, so I'll leave it alone. But that's something to, to notice. But if you look at the, at the bark, and I was hoping to get this beautiful sunny perspective on it, it's, uh, it is a chocolate-colored bark. It is a black to brown bark, which is very distinctive, I think, and very beautiful. So as a tree, it stands out in a good way. and. Um, you know, produces a decent trunk that really can hold up against wind pretty well. It's uh, flexi flexible in the right way. This has been through many heavy wind events, over 100 mile an hour wind events, and it survived. Now it might blow down many branches and all the leaves, but it's lived through it. And one of the ways that I prevent it from getting really damaged from winds like that is to keep it trimmed. So what are the next steps for the beautiful black sapote for the chocolate pudding tree? Well, after I harvest the fruit, I'm certainly going to trim it back significantly. What I'll do is take out the larger 
woody branches and try to promote more branch growth, more branches, more fruit. And really right after you harvest the fruit is a great time to trim back most trees. I know that this is not necessarily a tender tree to cold weather, so it can handle a little bit of cool weather in terms of zone 10A cool weather. And uh, the trimming of it will promote new growth, but I think it can still survive through maybe a few little cold spells we might still have. All right, so thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe learned something about the black sapote, the chocolate pudding tree, and uh, we even tried some of its delicious fruit. Mm -mm -mm. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll plant some seeds and show you how they grow so easily from seeds. This is a great one to get right into your yard. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I hope I see you back on the next one. Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. Ah, there you are. Chickens. Hey, welcome to my backyard. Today we're going to look at a really cool 